The use of electricity is all around us. We mostly take for granted the thousands of tasks that it performs safely, efficiently and economically, day in and day out. But to get electricity to where it's needed, when it's needed, is something of a modern miracle. Why a miracle? Well, unlike water, electricity can only be stored in very small quantities. To turn over a car engine a few times perhaps, provide emergency lighting while a building is evacuated, or to power a forklift truck throughout the day. So, electricity must be generated as it is needed. Loss of a popular television program that everyone wants to see, or an unexpected cold snap, would be no excuse if every sudden demand could not be met. And what a demand it could be. On a winter's morning, a massive 44 gigawatts is not unusual. From 8.30, industry creates a high demand throughout the day. As evening meals are prepared, the demand climbs to its maximum, then reducing until a small surge occurs as drinks are made before bedtime. Through the rest of the night, the demand continues to fall as time switches turn off loads such as storage heating before starting to pick up again at around 6.30 a.m. when people get up and prepare breakfast. As many hundreds of people switch on kettles or toasters in kitchens across the country, power stations, perhaps hundreds of miles away, must start producing the extra energy required. The plant necessary to generate this power is usually both complex and very large which together with generous supplies of cooling water and sufficient fuel stores to anticipate any crisis, take up a lot of space. For this reason, power stations are usually built near to a source of fuel, traditionally coal or oil, on land unsuitable for domestic development and away from densely populated areas. Even where fuel storage is not a problem, such as at this nuclear power station, this type of plant is also sited away from residential areas. Although modern gas-fired plants tend to be much smaller, with no large chimneys, these power plants also tend to be sited near to fuel sources. And so, here too, the output of the station must be transmitted, sometimes over long distances, to load centres elsewhere. And of course this applies even more so where electricity is produced from natural resources such as water power or wind generators like these. In the early days of electricity, many towns had their own power station, usually built to supply the local tram system, with surplus power sold to householders. Any heavy demand or plant failure could mean lowered voltage or at worst, the supply cut off for long periods. Very soon, demands for energy outstripped the ability of small local generating stations to meet these requirements. And in the 1930s, a network of power lines called the grid system first linked together local power stations, then generating centres across the country. The arrival of the grid system also meant that electricity was much more readily available to isolated communities. And now, rural homes, farms, country pubs, and even the village hall could be connected to enjoy the benefit of electricity. Later, to accommodate increasing demands of the transfer of bulk power over long distances, the supergrid was introduced, operating at the much higher 275,000 volts and 400,000 volts. <laughs> 